Good evening and uh, welcome to the sixth form uh, Q&A event. Um, thank you to those of you joining me live. Um, I can see a few of you, a few of you are already in here. Um, uh, and welcome to those of you who are watching this as a recorded video on our school website. My name is Matthew Bornat. I'm the head of sixth form here at Newstead Wood School. I'll talk you through some points around our recent transition weeks for our new students, and I'll then outline the Newstead sixth form journey. So my aim here tonight is to help parents and carers understand the path ahead and how we at Newstead will help the students to engage with the various challenges before them, supporting them and supporting you. If you have any questions, then please use the chat function, um, the dialog box on this on this meeting. Miss Harvey, the head of year 12. Mr Lewis, a year 12 form tutor and assistant head teacher responsible for teaching and learning, are both coordinating the Q&A box discussion. Uh, our head teacher, Mr Blount, and also our deputy head teacher, Miss Sword, are also both present this evening to answer questions through the dialogue box. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic to see Newstead students, um, new joiners and also internal students really engaging in challenging lessons over the last week and a half. We have we have immersed the students within the subjects they're passionate about, challenged them to learn and, and we want them to keep learning over the summer with their bridging units, something I'm sure you're hearing about from the students. These are pieces of work to be completed over the holidays, which they will be assessed on in September. Um, this transition week has allowed students to quickly begin making friends, settling in, finding their way around, becoming aware of our expectations, and hopefully they're going to have some fun in the process. This will make September less daunting for everyone. It will speed up the process of settling in so that we can start students with good pace and focused minds in the new term. If you have any questions around the transition week process, then please do use the Q&A box um, for, we, um, you've got plenty of uh, uh, teachers on hand to answer your questions around transition week. Uh, we are still getting questions around um, changing subjects even, or, or getting a taste of another one. If that's the case, um, we can facilitate that. Do ask your questions and you'll, you'll get an answer here. Students may want to change their subject choices between now and September. In most cases, we should be able to accommodate this. So if a student has studied for uh, four subjects over the transition week, after their exam results, they may indeed change one, two or more of those choices. We fully appreciate that. We are oversubscribed, especially in the STEM subjects. We've planned our school timetable already for next year um, with the choices our new year 12 students have made during transition week. But rest assured, in most cases, it is still possible to move choices and where we can facilitate this move, we will. Even into September, students move courses and many who start with four will have dropped to three by Christmas. This is all expected by us. And we work with the students to, 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 walk, to walk them through the long process of making successful A-level choices. They've started now during transition week. They've got time to think over the summer holidays, um, to reflect on their, uh, their GCSE results, and we will ensure they're making the right choices at the beginning in September. During our recent transition week, we did have the careers officer and the careers assistant available to offer advice around which A-levels complement one another, especially with a view to progression to university. Likewise, the head student team and the sixth form team staff have been available for discussion. If you have any questions about A-level choices, do please put them into the Q&A box. Do also remember you can get in touch with the sixth form team over the summer and our email addresses are on the website and shown here we've got the email address for Miss Jeffries, who is our sixth form administrator. Another aim of Transition Week was to introduce the students to the new processes for how we keep the school community COVID safe. We've made use of bi-weekly lateral flow tests during the transition weeks. We've made use of social distancing and mask wearing measures around the school. We aim to carry on these government supported practices going forward. And again, please email us if you have any questions um, or, or use the Q&A box this evening. We have made use of sunflower lanyards as the recognised system for health exemption for mask wearing. 
Alongside our high expectations of students at Newstead with regards to the academics, we also believe that enrichment is the other key part of our transition week. Students have had tasters with our student led clubs and societies. They've um, done some team building with their year 13 house captains and they have had the opportunity to hear about the EPQ qualification, to hear from universities in the Friday lecture, to hear from the NCS at a lunchtime stall and to complete varied enrichment activities on Wednesday, such as Model United Nations public speaking through to cultural studies with Japanology and many other activities, activities going on. So enrichment is key at Newstead because it supports the academic passion of any student. It's a chance to promote well-being, explore interests, make friends and even to further academic interest with research and reading. Many of these sessions were student delivered by our own year 13s and this is an expectation we have at Newstead that your children will go on to become the next generation of student leaders here within the school. We encourage them to apply for student leadership positions as early as October half term in year 12. So we give them time to settle in over September and to understand the academic expectations and then we raise the bar with our extracurricular and supercurricular opportunities. We encourage all of our students to apply for leadership opportunities and we treat both internal students and new joiners equally. If you have any questions about student enrichment, please do use the Q&A box now. So having finalised their A-level choices and their student leadership positions by Christmas, our year 12s will have settled in and they'll be encouraged very firmly to use the second and third terms to work hard in pursuit of their academics in order to perform well in their end of year 12 exams in June. These exams form the basis of their university predicted grade and they're an important staging post, a halfway house, if you like, for our sixth form students as they progress towards universities and their, their future destinations. At the end of year 12, we launch UCAS to our students and this is the university application process. And we encourage them to use UCAS to start writing personal statements and prepare their applications for university courses. I'm well experienced with UCAS applications and with the support from my head teacher and our careers team, the sixth form team will work with the year 12s to finalise their application by the November of year 13 at the very latest. So they have a clear six months of academic focus before their final exams. If you have any UCAS or university related questions, then please do use the Q&A box. We are conscious of COVID related interruptions to exams. This year and last year, we've successfully arranged for internal, invigilated and timed tests spread throughout the year to ensure students have a wealth of data to rely on for the formulation of their grades. Our grades remain strong Last year, our A star to B was 86% and 14 students went to Oxbridge. We had 12 students leave to read medicine at university, which is nearly 10% of the cohort. We are expecting similarly strong results this year. If you have any questions about destinations or A level results, please do, you, do use the Q&A box. In summation of the Newstead sick form journey, from the very moment a student comes to Newstead, we are helping them to carefully and wisely prepare for the time that they actually leave. To be successful and independent, we aim to nurture a love of their subjects. We aim to allow them to the space to develop their passion for their academic and personal interests. We'll also support them as they plan their future destinations. I am now going to run through a couple of topics that come up as frequently asked questions from both parents and carers every year. I will pause momentarily. Um, I've got staff on here who are helping support. If anything's coming in from the um, Q&A box, please do let me know now. Otherwise, I will ramble on through these frequently asked questions that we have here. OK, well, I'll take the silence, um, given that I can't see the chat box at the moment. Um, I'll take the silence as um, indicative of me to, to carry on. I'm, I'm going to uh, run through these frequently asked questions. 
um, and I'll take them in order. Um, this has come from some feedback from students already over the last week. Um, and also these are just really the regular questions that parents want them to, to know the answer to. Um, so the EPQ, this is the extended project qualification. Um, and this is a really worthwhile, really worthwhile course. It's delivered by Mr Lewis, he's online with us at the moment. Um, and it takes place January to January. So January of year 12, um, once students have sort of settled in, they've, they've done three months of study, and they've got to know the school, they've got to know their priorities and their workload, and they feel ready, hopefully, for the next challenge. Um, and they would, you start reading for an EPQ. It's a research project, essentially. It's a 4,000 word essay. Um, there is the potential to provide um, things like a, a photography exhibition or a sculpture, um, but typically students will write a, an extended essay. And it's a, it's a piece of research where students are able to really probe an area of academic interest which they can't otherwise pursue in the current A levels they're taking. So it's particularly relevant, for example, for someone who might want to study law. So you can't, we don't offer law A level here at Newstead. And so students might be taking whatever three or four subjects they're taking at A level, but they could take an EPQ in, law, in, in a law related subject. And it could be anything through from discrimination within the justice system, which was one that was uh, done this year, through to uh, reviewing the kind of changes to uh, internal security legislation that's happened over the well over the last decade or 20 years, um, looking at things like uh, different prime minister's approach to counterterrorism. Um, so it's a chance then to show a particular interest in an area of law, prepare for an interview, prepare for a university course, um, and and just show that real passion. We had a student once who, who went to Oxford who did an EPQ and they were looking at the wife of, of Edward III. I don't even remember who, who that is, but it, that actually was the basis of their Oxford interview. Um, that's where they dis differentiated themselves from other candidates. And that's where they showed their passion um, for this very, very sort of influential historical female leader. Um, so an EPQ is fantastic qualification. It, 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 you get a grade, A star, A, B, C, etc. Um, for the last two years, we've had 100% A star to A. That's that's really significant because I, I, Russell Group universities, um, so the top two of universities, but we're not talking about Cambridge or Oxford or Imperial, um, but other other very top universities, places like UCL, places. Um, the Manchester's and Leeds, the Exeter's. Um, what they do is they recognise that if you have an A or an A star and an EPQ, they will agree to lower their entry offer for your university course by one A level grade. So your three A course becomes two A's and a B to get into if you've got an A or an A star in your EPQ. Now, we um, support students with the EPQ by giving them a, a staff mentor who they'll meet with um, as often as they like. It is an independent research module and students have to manage their own time, but it can be, I've had students who wanted to meet weekly, I've had students who want to meet monthly, and whatever works for each student is, is what we work out. Um, but they're given guidance, they're given support, they have regular meetings also with Mr Lewis. At the moment we've got our current uh, year 12s, who are every Wednesday afternoon meeting with Mr Lewis to run through EPQ related material. Uh, to check check um, how they're getting on that sort of thing. So um, it's supported within the school, but it is also obviously encouraged uh, as an independent research unit that students are doing it outside of, of school time as well. Um, students will often use their private studies or their supervised studies to, to look at their EPQ. Um, it's great that they start it slightly later, not from September, but rather January, because students will have more of an idea of what they want to do at university. Um, so it's an opportunity to look at something like law or medicine, but likewise, it's an opportunity if you're if you're into English, it might be a particular author you want to look at. Um, so it's, it's not just for those um, areas where we don't offer A levels, it's for any any area of interest at all. And there really have been some fantastic ones and we end up with a wonderful evening that Mr Lewis runs where all the students present their EPQs. Um, they, they run online this year, but they're still brilliant. Uh, 
brilliant opportunities for the students to do some public speaking, to put a presentation together and to reflect on their learning as well. So I really would encourage an EPQ. My, my uh, position on A levels and EPQs really is that you should be thinking of three A levels and an EPQ. That would be the ideal um, as far as I'm concerned. And that leads me on to my next topic. So three or four A levels, some people consider five um, if you're really looking for some punishment. Um, three A levels is what all universities offer on. There are no courses um, in the UK which offer on four A levels. Some will stipulate that they want certain subjects, but there is um, no, no necessity to study for. Um, the last course was the medical course at GKT where they required an AS, they needed an A um, in, a, in a fourth subject, but that's now gone. So it's just three A levels. We have had um, cases where people have applied with four A levels for a three A level entry. Uh, so the course is three A's, for example, and they've applied with their four A's and the university has responded by saying we want four A's. If you're predicted four A's, that's what we want. Um, so it can sometimes work against students. I do also think um, of two things. One is it puts a lot of pressure on students and you would be surprised how many times people get two A's and two B's when if they'd taken three, they might have improved uh, you know, the quality of the three A levels they've achieved. Um, but also it puts undue pressure really on students. They need if you're taking four A levels when you're in year 13, once you factor in a couple of uh, supervised studies, you don't have any spare time in school. That's no time to be a house captain, a head student, work on a club or society to do an EPQ um, and just to enrich yourself through the through the enrichment programme or to just enjoy the um, sort of sixth form life and being part of the new community through things like clubs and societies. So um, I certainly think starting with four can be a, a sensible thing if you're unsure. Um, and as I said earlier, people will often drop down to three A levels by the time they get to Christmas of year 12. They might start with four, not be sure between, say, English and history, and they'll, they'll, they'll work it out and then drop. Um, at present, we have maybe 10 to 15 percent of year 12 who are still on four. They have just had their year 12 exams and we are expecting that to reduce as students realise the workload and also start to prioritise their, their high quality A levels opposed to quantity. Um, studying for A levels is often done, I think, because we want to stand out from the crowd. I do think there are other ways to do that that are actually more beneficial for you in producing a rounded student. One would be the EPQ. Um, because it's in that January to January window, it means you're not taking that that qualification at the time as your other A-levels. So it spreads out the, the burden. Um, but at the same time, there are other things you can do to really stand out from the crowd. It's wider reading, it's work experience, it's volunteering, um, it's entering essay prizes. We had someone this year, uh, we just found out today, who's won some money for some Oxford essay prize that they've won. Um, it's very impressive, but it's, it's, it's this is the opportunity. If you want to demonstrate to a particular university that you're different, that you are special, well, these top universities offer essay prizes, and that's in STEM subjects as well as the humanities. And if you want to be known by the admissions tutor at that university, the way to really do that is not do four A levels, but it's to enter into the competitions or to attend the um, sort of master classes, uh, the sort of week long master classes that some of these universities offer. Um, OK, uh, we moving on to the next one. Uh, further maths as an A level. Here we treat it as an A level. We don't squash it into one lesson a week. We um, it is given the same time as any other A level. Um, it is treated on par as any other A level. And so your three A levels indeed may be maths, further maths and one other subject. Um, further maths is a fantastic course to consider if you are thinking of economics, if you are thinking of finance, if you're thinking of maths itself, anything to do with engineering. Um, we do have a growing maths department. Um, it's going from strength to strength. Um, we've got some fantastic new teachers here at Newstead. 
Um, and I think there's been a lot of positivity coming out of the transition week around that. So um, with the increased use of the Olympiads as well, we're seeing um, additional maths as a as a, a Wednesday enrichment as well, where, where students are looking at um, the sort of maths questions around step papers to do with maths, which is sort of an entry um, exam that some of the highest universities will offer, places like Warwick and um, Imperial will offer an entry entry test and we, we have that provision on a, on a Wednesday afternoon as well. So maths is very active here and we have full respect for, for, for further maths as an A-level. Um, this question, this next one is kind of controversial because I think there are good arguments on both sides, choosing A-levels for interest or for career. Um, certainly we've had students who are not in love with chemistry but who have taken it and through hard work and determination have done very well in order to achieve their chemistry A level so that they can go on to a career in science or medicine or what have you. Um, you're always going to do best in the subjects you have an interest in and a passion for. Um, and that is not going to be questionable because you will do the work for wider reading, you'll enter the essay prize, you will do the EPQ and you'll do it willingly and you will teach others and you will enjoy talking about it in your spare time. If you're just choosing an A-level for the career, it's going to take a lot of hard work and determination. If you don't really like that A-level but you think you need it in order to go into a career, um, it is achievable. Um, it is where people fall down um, because they have a, an idea of a career that they want, but they're not actually able to really flourish and enjoy those A-levels. Um, I think there has to be an element of some interest. Um, so if you really want to be a doctor, as, as many as many people in Year 11 do, um, then you have to have some interest in science and, and, and maths. And if you don't have that, then you will struggle, not only because you've got to study it for three years for the A-level, but science and maths is what doctors study for, for medicine and then and, and for their degree, but also throughout their career. Um, there's, you know, there'll be another decade of exams for any, any doctor who qualifies and it's all science, it's all maths, it's all statistics. And if that's not for you, then think really carefully. Maybe it's a chance to reevaluate the career you're after. I did have a wonderful conversation once with a, with parents and, and a student in, uh, who, who just got their GCSE results, really wanted to do maths and sciences, didn't have the entry criteria, didn't meet the entry criteria to come to Newstead, but had the entry, had met the entry criteria for the humanities. She chose a different career path, she chose different A-levels and is now uh, finalising her studies at King's where she's reading uh, for law. So I think sometimes a sensible decision in year 11 go in with what you're good at and what you enjoy. That is, is really the best advice I'd give around choosing A-levels. Comes down to personal choice. Um, if you meet the entrance criteria, then you meet the entrance criteria. We can't assess your interest in the subject, but from my experience, people um, people show through their, their assessment results. Um, you find that over the two year period of sixth form, if someone's interest really isn't there, then their, their results do decrease as time goes on. OK, uh, we do get questions around sport in the sixth form. Um, sport is growing in the sixth form. Um, it was only maybe five years ago. There weren't really any competitive teams and uh, sport was just something uh, that people did at break time. We now have Wednesday enrichment where um, again in Wednesday afternoon, as at other schools, uh, we have sport here. We have rounders, we have netball, we have football. We are in a football league. We didn't play this year um, because of the COVID restrictions, but um, we are entered for a league next year. Um, and that's a, uh, a, a boys football. But we have got some growing interest in, 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 in continuing competitive sport for the women as well. So um, watch this space. Uh, I think we're going to have some rounders and netball leagues that we're joining, hopefully, um, in, in the coming months. Um, we do allow, we have currently, we have, uh, in terms of high performance sport, we have um, Emma, Emma Raducanu is in year 13. She's also in Wimbledon. 
this year. Um, so uh, we're very we're very proud of her. She has managed to juggle her sport with her A levels here at Newstead. Um, so all the way from that kind of high level um, uh, you know, ranked tennis player. We also have people who are playing further down, further down the ranking orders in tennis, but we also have swimmers, rowers. Um, and so if sport is something that you, you, you still enjoy doing, but you're trying to manage your academics as well, we do have conversations with students every year and we arrange a suitable timetable um, if you are a high performing sports player. Um, privileges is something that all sick formers should look forward to as long as your attendance and as long as your academics are where they should be or better then uh, where we can we, we do try to treat students with privilege with, with, with um, respect give them some privilege give them some independence around their learning so for example if you were free on a Friday afternoon you've got no um, supervised study you've got no lessons you just have a private study um, we would allow the privilege of being able to go home early in, in that afternoon as as year, and, and the, these privileges only emerge after October half term in year 12 they don't merge straight away we need students in understanding the expectations working hard settling in but after October half term we do grant privileges and for those students who are successful they, it can be an afternoon of early leaving and it can be a morning of late entry um, so we do work with the students looking at their timetables to work out what is um, manageable. Many students don't actually take the privileges because they want to be here to work. Um, sometimes it's more a case of wanting the option on a say for a Friday afternoon. Normally that many students will just go to the library, but um, say for example in the summer, say for example a, a bit of time when there's not too much on, sometimes it's nice to go home early on Friday. So privileges is something we we do give but we also take away and that is based again on attendance data and on performance data. Uh, we also liaise with parents uh, as, as well um, around this. Uh, OK, moving on to Wednesday in Richmond, as I say, um, sport takes place here, but there's other things that, that happen as well. Um, we have students who, who need to do volunteering as part of their preparation for university. So it's physiotherapy, any of the health care uh, professions, um, veterinary, students require the option, uh, they require to get, to get some volunteering and given the, the pressures on our students at the weekends and the evenings to be working and to see family and, and to socialise and have their own well-being, what we try to do is, is say well if you if if this is feasible and if it's appropriate we will let you go and volunteer um, during the school time, during Wednesday in Richmond. So it might be that a student wants to go to the PRU to do some uh, volunteering on the wards there, the hospitals, so we would allow them to do that. Driving lessons are also you know, increasingly hard to come by. Um, and again, it's, it's allowing the option for students to use their enrichment on a Wednesday to do that on a Wednesday afternoon. It only happens over, you know, as long as it takes you to pass your test, so hopefully not too long. And the whole idea of the Wednesday enrichment is, is rather than choosing one thing that you do throughout the year, so every Wednesday you do sport, the idea is actually that every half term you're swapping. So one of the things you might think of is doing the medical dental veterinary course that's offered by Mr Blount. It might be it's the Oxbridge course that's offered by Miss Sword. We have Japanology, which is a sort of East Asian cultural studies. We have Model United Nations, which is good for public speaking. And actually, if you are applying for any of these sort of elite courses, places like Oxbridge, um, so an Oxbridge medic, we would encourage them to do not only the, the medic course and the Oxbridge course, but also the Model United Nations. It's just about encouraging good public speaking uh, in the, and that all builds into interview practice and being able to speak in public. So MUN is quite popular, obviously sport um, and so we are we are flexible and we, what we want to encourage really on that Wednesday afternoon is for over the six half terms of year 12 what we want is for the year 12 to get six different experiences hopefully and um, that are going to help enrich their uh, their education as part of this enrichment program in year 12 we also offer a Friday lecture so this Friday during the transition weeks we've had uh, we had last week it was uh, the University of Leicester, but this week it's the University of Bath 
who are both talking about making the most of sixth form and how to choose your A-levels. And most students will, will attend those. But at, simultaneously, we've got a, a lecture that's coming from, um, and last week it was St George's and this week it's Nottingham, where we're talking about medical applicants, uh, what to be doing as a year 11, what should you be doing over sixth form to prepare a medical application. Um, and so we've got universities, this is one of the key things we use the Friday lecture for, this sort of futures and careers um, guidance comes through the Friday lecture. At the same time, we have had all sorts of different different speakers. So um, we have uh, speakers from social justice campaigns coming in to speak. Um, so we sort of raise sort of the political awareness. We have um, had people from things uh, like um, uh, driving safely from the Bromley Council um, to help help students receive again sort of sensible information around driving carefully. Um, but we've also received uh, people like alumni who come in and speak about their career and kind of give inspirational speeches. Um, so the chair of the British Science Association is a former alumni, um, former student, and uh, she came in to speak to um, the year 12s earlier in the year to sort of inspire them in, in science. Um, so the Friday lecture will also encourage things, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about apprenticeships, it will talk about gap years. Um, we have had uh, also this year people in talking about foundation courses for art and that's one of the other, you know, one of the things to be aware of is that the majority of students here will leave to go to university so we do need to prepare them for that but other, there are always every year students who, who apply for other courses and other options and we do facilitate that through the Friday lecture. Um, we also share those resources online with the students and where appropriate, especially if there's a sort of parents guide to gap years or um, university, we share that with parents as well. Um, we do offer PSHE, it takes place um, regularly throughout the week. Um, there'll be two PSHE slots uh, during sixth form in the afternoon. Um, the key kind of areas that we cover in the sixth form um, are number one, diversity and inclusion. Um, we want sort of new to be a safe space, a welcoming space for everyone. So diversity and inclusion is quite key. We also look at consent and relationships. We've got, um, we obviously look at these things like down in school as well, but um, this is an important uh, thing for, for 17, 18 year olds to look at. We look at substance misuse, we look at mental well-being, um, and we also respond to the various um, we respond to the needs of the students. Often students will come to us and ask for a particular focus. Um, if something has happened, that, that very much happened last year around the um, Black Lives Matter campaign. So we ran a series of, of events and, and sessions around PSHE to do with the issue of race, equality and diversity at that, at that time. So uh, PSHE, we try and we do certainly try and cover sort of the basics for, for sick formers, but we're also responsive to the needs of the students as well. Um, trips. Trips is, a, is an interesting one. Um, I have had student, students not allowed to go on trips because it's a, a diversion from their academics. Um, the trips we allow are supportive of academics, so none of them are, are seen as a sort of a jolly or time away from work. These are purposeful trips um, for our students. Um, at present, none are taking place, so I can't really talk to you about the classics trip to Greece or politics trip to New York. I can talk to you about Duke of Edinburgh. This will probably, and it's, it's booked in for the summer next year. So if your students were to, sorry, if your children were to come to Newstead, they would be taking their Duke of Edinburgh at the end of uh, year 12 in that summer gap. Um, there is a there's an expedition book to the west coast of Scotland where students can, um, they can complete their bronze if they did start that. Um, they have some training on this residential trip in the west coast of Scotland near Glencoe and um, then they would do their gold and it counts for, they would do their gold expedition and it counts for both. So it's going to, for this generation of people who've lost out on Duke of Edinburgh, it's a, uh, it's a worthwhile trip. Um, it, there is cost obviously involved in these trips. So the Duke of Edinburgh trip is a £50 deposit and uh, it's a £900 cost overall um, and that sort of leads me then into the financial support that's available through our sick form. We have a sick form bursary. Um, we uh, sort of encourage students where they are able to and willing to to apply for the bursary. Um, we want to help students with 
the, the resources they need, be that uh, textbooks, be that stationery, whatever it is they require. Um, we have a really helpful finance department uh, who's run by our business manager, Ms. Viner, and she takes the time to get to know students and their and their parents uh, who, 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 re who, who require any financial support. So dealing with it sensitively with one person. Um, and uh, we've, we, you know, really helped uh, certain students to to help them with their studies and that's what it's really all about the financial support element um, so do do uh, have a look at that it is on the website this it form bursary um, and you know we receive the money for students and and so it's really it is something that you should make use of if you're entitled to another frequently asked question is to do with the entry criteria um, our entry criteria is on the website um, at present, we are oversubscribed um, and we're, we're not only oversubscribed, we have an overwhelming number of students who are obviously looking at STEM subjects. So um, I have had a few questions around. I, I haven't got a six. I haven't got a seven. Sorry, in, in the subject I need. I've only got a six. Will I still be able to do it? At present, the answer is no. Uh, we are oversubscribed. Um, historically, when we haven't been, over, been oversubscribed, going back a few years, um, the entry criteria may have been um, juggled, but we, we're not in a position where we can actually do that. We actually can't fit. If we did that, we wouldn't be able to fit people in rooms. So given the situation, we, we are having to strictly enforce the entry criteria. It's not always what a student would like to hear. Um, there are other options. You know, have a discussion with us. There are other A levels we offer. We can find um, alternatives based on your strengths. But likewise, there are, you know, if, if, if Newstead isn't the sixth form for you because you don't meet the entry criteria, then we can. And I would be willing to talk to any student. I have done already this week around um, if Newstead is not right for you, where else where it would be? Um, we get a lot of questions around careers. Obviously, I think. Um, Young people have to make big decisions very early in their lives, don't they? So it's, you know, you're in year nine and you're making GCSE options and that's narrowing down your studies and then you go into A level and at the age of 16 you're choosing three subjects. And, and I think that there is that pressure about trying to forge a career, trying to forge a, a university from, you know, from the outset to know what it is you want to do. Um, many students do know what they want to do and that's absolutely wonderful. And they've got supportive home, um, they've got parents that are really supportive and are helping them, and they've got advice from friends and family, and and they know what they want to do. And if that's the case, come and talk to our careers department. We can help you with, they can help you with it's Mrs. Brown, Miss Green. They can help you with volunteering opportunities, with work experience, with alumni links, um, and and help you with finding the right courses and finding additional things you can do to prepare for that career, for that future journey. But the careers team are also there for those people who don't know, and there are many people who don't. And I think sometimes there's a bit of a front. If you talk to any year 12 on the first day of school, they'll all say they, of sixth form, they'll all say they know what they want to do at university. And this changes over time. And so we will have, you know, as the adults have to recognise this, um, they will, some will will not know what they want to do and some will change. And again, the careers team are there for these students just as much. And that's to discuss options. Sometimes just talking about an apprenticeship might be enough to decide, yes, it is what I want to do or no, it isn't. And talking about degree apprenticeships, which are fantastic opportunities. Um, getting paid to go to university, getting paid to get a degree, but also four days in the working week, you're actually working in a, high quality workplace and um, we had two students last year one went to goldman's and the other went to deloitte both doing computing related degree apprenticeships one through um queen mary's and the other one through um birkbeck but both of them getting a degree both of them getting paid a full-time salary both of them having their fees paid for um it is a if you're interested and it is around stem it's around it's around business, it's around computing, it's around finance. If you're interested in those sorts of areas, certainly look at degree apprenticeships. Both of the students made parallel applications. So they applied through UCAS in the normal way to their five universities, and then they also applied for the degree apprenticeships. Degree apprenticeship is quite a grilling process. Um, uh, sorry, quite a grueling process. You've got interviews, you've got um, uh, test centre days, 
you've got online meetings now as well, um, you have networking events and that's all prior to being accepted on a degree apprenticeship. So they really put you through the mill, um, but the prize is massive. So that's something worth worth considering if, you, if you're not considering uh, the normal um, route into, uni uh, into university. Um, so yes, the careers team can help with all of these discussions around future choices, but likewise, Miss Harvey, the head of year 12, Mr Patel, who's the head of year 13, and, my, and myself, uh, Zick Form, I can, uh, we can all talk to you about, uh, from our experience, helping students make dis decisions around careers. Another vital part of the jigsaw in determining all of this is parents. Um, and so being able to offer guidance, that's, that's, that's really the best thing that we can, we can do as the adults. You know, students, they have to make, these young people have to make their own decisions around there are choices because they've got to live with them but they but there, there are two mistakes I think that are made one is being so open to anything that they haven't got any direction whatsoever that's actually a bit harmful for them because they need there's it's about reassurance it's about showing them look I know what your strengths are these sorts of things would be useful and these sorts of things wouldn't be useful and, and just having some parameters around the guidance you offer is is a useful thing to do but likewise we have to also not be too um, prescriptive over what a student is uh, what, what our children or students are going to do because that builds resistance sometimes um, you should be a doctor because you're brilliant at science and then all of a sudden they don't want to do it anymore it's too much pressure they they worry and they don't want to do it not because they're not good at science, but rather because they want the freedom to make their own choice. So let I would say around around careers and, 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 and future choices, there's a lot of support and advice here at Newstead. We work with parents, um, often shared meetings where we'll have the careers advisor, me and you, and we'd sit with the students and, and talk through the options. Um, when they feel supported, that's when they make the best decisions. When they feel recognised about around their strengths, um, that's when they get the best decisions. Um, so careers is, is, is a massive part of what we do here in the sixth form. Um, on previous slides, you've seen destinations for universities, but one of the other things to be aware of is also destinations for careers. Um, and with the, with the building alumni network that Mrs Brown is, is putting together, um, already this year it's been fantastic to share the alumni network with our current students and, and be that around recent alumni who can help with things like personal statements, things like interview practice because they've just just done them or whether it's more advanced uh, uh, alumni who've been working in, in industry for 10, 20 years who can open doors, provide work experience, provide career discussions around around their industry. Um, that's been really sort of a rewarding thing that we've been introducing. So careers is, is certainly growing um, uh, in, in the sixth form. It's something we're really pushing. Fortunately, as I say, we've got two careers, um, two people within the careers team, and they are attached to the sixth form. Yes, the, the lower school get their lower school sort of interview, practice interviews and, and careers talks um, as they do as they do in all schools. But here, here at Newstead, they are specifically attached to the to the sixth form team. Um, Mrs Brown, the, the careers uh, lead, is often found in my office. And I'm, I'm often sending students to talk to her, so um, it's a really vibrant part of, of Newstead. Um, OK, so leading me on to other supports we have here. We have there's the partial support here um, at Newstead is um, extensive and I'll talk you through it. OK, so um, obviously each um, student will be in a form and they'll have a form tutor who, who will stay with them through their time here in the sixth form, say for two years. And that's within a class of about 25. Um, they'll then have a head of year um, who they will um, be able to turn to for pastoral support. Um, and then they have me. I'm the, the head of sixth form. So we have the sixth form team. We also have Miss Jeffries, who I've mentioned earlier, who's our sixth form administrator. So the four of us in the sixth form team, plus we've got the form tutors, and that provides the kind of immediate support that any student would um, have available to them, their teaching staff. Um, and, and on that note, students will often make use of their teaching staff. If you have four or five hours of, of lessons a week with a particular teacher, often that rapport builds and, and they can also be a person. Um, that you go to for any sort of partial support. 
Um, increasingly so in, in the sixth form, I suppose. You spend more time with your teachers, you build that rapport, you're more, you know, more of an, um, not, not an equal relationship, but a, 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 a better rapport. So um, that's, often, that's often the case. Um, but then we also have a designated student service, uh, student support services team. So we have uh, Mrs. McGregor and Miss Arscott, and they work out of the student support room, uh, which is a, a classroom up near the library where students can self-refer um, if they uh, feel the need that they need some support for any for any reason. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean just sort of charging out of a lesson and going up to student support services, but it does mean that students um, are able to go up there um, and arrange appointments uh, for a longer discussion or to go up there if they're feeling overwhelmed and to either find a quiet space just to compose themselves or it might be a place where they can talk in, in detail to either Miss Arscott or, or Mrs McGregor. Um, we also have an, an, an online at the moment as well is, is Miss Sword, who's our designated safeguarding lead, um, deputy head teacher, and, and she runs the sort of pastoral team, all the heads of year in, in, in the school. Um, and I'm the deputy designated safeguarding lead. And again, um, safeguarding is, you know, is a massive priority within schools. We take it very seriously. Um, and we have a sort of a real network of, of adult support. Um, we also have a school counsellor. Um, our current school counsellor is moving on in the next couple of weeks and we have someone starting in September. Um, and, and this again, it's, it's sometimes it's easier for sick formers uh, if, if that is something they require, some sort of support, but they don't want to miss lessons, they don't want to miss school. Having someone who can see them around their, their timetable, can see them when they are free or in a supervised study, can, can see them at a time that's convenient in school, so no travel, no cost. Um, is, is a really helpful support. So we're really grateful for the, the, the student council, the school council we have here. Um, and we all work as a team in order to help provide the best support we can to the students. We have other things uh, going on as well within our pastoral support. So we have uh, timeout cards. Uh, this is an option where students, um, again, if, and then we are seeing this obviously in that we're all aware of the sort of post COVID increase in anxiety uh, with young people. Um, well, I think with all of us, um, but uh, timeout cards are, are used to help manage that, where, where students can take a timeout and, and at the moment, you know, whether it's a moment in the corridor or it's taking themselves to the student support room, uh, they are able to do this. We would, they wouldn't be issued one without fully understanding how to use it and um, without parents being informed and all, all that sort of thing as well. Um, and then we also have a mentoring system. So, uh, the mentoring system really verges more on the academics um, and it's where senior members of staff will mentor students who um, are struggling for, for any, any perceived reason. Yes, it's around academics, but also sometimes those, if, if someone is struggling academically, often there are some well-being issues as well. They sort of go hand in hand. So the, and, that, and that's a sort of a weekly meeting with a senior member of staff. I know that Ms. Sword is a mentor. I know that Mr. Blount is a mentor. In fact, all of us on here tonight are mentors to students in school. Um, and this is where you build that personal relationship over the weeks and months with someone who is struggling academically or struggling personally in order to help them achieve their full potential. So there really is a, a whole wealth of individuals involved and systems involved in order to provide pastoral support. Um, and we obviously have our, our SENCO and uh, the, the, the SEN uh, provision is uh, likewise carried out here. Um, for new joiners, one of the things is there is a bit of a time lag in the paperwork coming from a, a previous school. Two news today, they physically have to send it over. Um, some of it's going electronic these days, um, but it's a, it's a bit of a hybrid system at the moment. So if you do have any SEN needs or just needs in general, um, it's best to inform us uh, prior to uh, yeah, in, in advance as early as possible. Um, sometimes people are quite private around the, the issues they face and that's absolutely understandable. And what you can then do is um, liaise with one member of staff, that would be the most sensible. And so for any new joiner or even internal who has any sort of partial support needs, my recommendation would be that you speak with Miss Harvey, your head of year in the first instance. Um, and again, it might be that you'd rather speak to somebody else and that can be arranged so that they are your point of contact. 
how do we deal with academic underperformance? And it's one of the things that parents and carers do want to know. Um, well, we are quite open, so we will share reports and letters home. We don't hide anything. Uh, honesty is the best practice. So we will share not only you know, reports and letters will come home at regular points throughout the year, but you will also find that um, if a student is struggling academically, there will be email and phone communication um, and requests for meetings online or in person to discuss the issues involved. Um, as I said earlier, there's senior staff mentoring is one of the techniques or strategies we'll use to support a student. Um, we also have and uh, we have sort of um, department support sessions. Some of these come in two different two different ways here at Newstead. Some of them are what we call Excel sessions. So those are for students who are doing well, but want to do even better. They're getting an A, but they want an A star. Um, and then we have the support sessions, which are for students who are underperforming against their minimum target grade and they will be required to attend those support sessions and registered um, and again again sort of given revision and support and exam technique support to help them improve their grade. Um, we can add additional studies or additional supervised studies to students timetables. So for example, um, typically a student will have four private studies or um, as the students call them, freeze, but they'll have four sessions where they're not allocated a lesson during the week. We can fill those with additional studies if we feel that a student requires to work um, a bit harder or, or, or if it, sometimes a student requests it because they want to work in school um, and they want the support of being registered and checked on. Um, and, and sometimes we set this around, for example, a specific issue. So it might be that students just running a bit behind with their history coursework. And so we'll set them some additional studies, maybe two, 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 two a week for a month in order for them to catch up on that specific piece of work. Uh, we also make use of peer mentors as well. And that's one of one of the things that's often very useful. Young people do like talking to young people. Uh, they find it less threatening um, and, and it's also often a good way to make friends and also um, make make purposeful friendships that are going to help you in the long run. So someone who might be struggling in a subject will be given a peer mentor, one of the student subject leaders in, in that subject. Um, someone who's excelling would be asked to mentor them. Sometimes we use year 13s to help year 12s. Um, Given, given the restrictions at the moment, it's, it's year 12s so who are helping year 12s. Um, but we set up a peer mentoring and often actually what you then find is a flourishing friendship. And then in their in their private studies, in their supervised studies, they're sitting and working together and then um, they are helping each other, coaching each other um, and enjoying their passion for their, their studies. Um, so peer mentoring is, is a very popular option. Um, it's vibrant throughout the lower school. Um, and it is something that we rolled out in the sixth form a few years ago, which has sort of taken off. So um, that's also oh, and one of the things when we think about these academic underperformance and different strategies we use is different horses for different courses. Some people need a senior staff mentor and there's no two ways about it and they need additional studies and they've got no privileges and that's just what's going to happen. For other people, it might be that actually it might be a peer mentor, it might be touching base with a senior staff mentor once or twice, but actually just working out a plan and then doing it themselves. For some of them, it's about attending support sessions. Some might, for, for caring responsibilities, they might not be able to stay after school and, and do that. And so it's working out a, a, a program of support which fits them. So these are all options, um, but we don't, we don't, in many ways, if you, if, you, if you force these options onto a student, again, they won't, feel happy about it and they won't respond in the best way. The best conversations are where you put these options out in front of the student and you say, well, which ones will work for you? You're obviously not leaving the room until we've decided which ones, but let's go through this and work out what works for you. And often the students can pick the best ones themselves. They're very honest here. They know their strengths and the weaknesses and, uh, and they're able to sort of understand why they're underperforming and how they need to improve. Um, so we, we do put we, we do talk them through. It's not it's all not all student choice, um, but we do work with them to to create a program of support. Um, I've mentioned here next so it's you, questions around university. It is where the majority of our students will go. Um, undoubtedly, 95 percent or more will attend a, a mainstream university. Um, 
uh, two thirds will look at you know, you're looking at two thirds of those attending a Russell group um, and you're looking at the top 10 percent at attending an elite university like Oxford, Cambridge, Durham, Warwick, Edinburgh, um, St Andrews, that sort of thing. Um, but we do recognise that we will have a range of students here in, at Newstead. So gap years are became very important last year when people weren't keen to go to university and isolate and, and have that sort of slightly odd first year experience of university. So um, gap years are something we, as I mentioned in the Friday lecture, we have gap year talks. Uh, this is the oyster company who come in and they talk about gap years and making them purposeful. It's not just a year off to sit at home. It's what work experience, what work, employment are you going to do, what volunteering? And if you're going to travel, you know, why are you doing that travel? Is it, you know, many, many students now are choosing to do it around conservation or choosing to do it around education um, more sort of globally. So, and, and, and thinking about how that gap year builds and supports the degree choice, the career choice as well. Um, Foundation courses, uh, again, like our foundation courses uh, are still um, very popular and, and, and they're still things that the students will go on to do. I think we have two from art this year who are going off to one to Central St Martins uh, and one, I think, maybe to Plymouth. Um, but these, the, so foundation course and art foundation course is a year where, where people will explore different art options. Are they a sculptor? Are they a painter? And um, before they finalise which art degree they're going to do. But these foundation courses, yes, yes, we have you know plenty looking at art and we have art teachers to help them with their portfolio and that sort of thing. Foundation courses also sort of creeping into uh, universities, in fact. So, for example, many, many science courses will have a foundation year programme as well for those students who have um, underperformed in their A-levels. So foundation courses worth are worth looking at. The bulk of our students won't be looking at them, um, but uh, typically with art, it's something that um, we we can support here as well. We've had students uh, it's, it's sort of every other year really where students are going off to a music conservatoire. So again, we have um, experience of that. It's Mr. Graham in music who helps again put students' portfolio and put their performance together. Um, so. Again, you know, and, and, and conservatoires really are, you know, top destinations for students to go to. And we have the, the alumni there. So, um, in fact, some of them have come back in to, uh, I think they're pro providing some music courses over the summer. So um, that's, that, that is something we've had. And also employment, you know, there are, there are local employers every year get in touch with me during May and say, have you got anyone who's leaving who wants a job in an accountancy firm? Um, so local high street sort of things. Um, and and so, yeah, again, help with CVs, help with interview practice, help with um, applications and helping students find employment. This is something we also um, we encourage anyway. You know, um, we with long summers after year 13 prior to university, many students will look at employment anyway. But there are students who choose not to go to university and access employment and we have helped them as well. And then the last week when you ask question, um, sometimes it comes in around reading. What do we do to kind of promote reading, especially if a student is studying STEM and they're not necessarily going to encounter a lot of reading um, material. So uh, we have um, we have a library, obviously, and students are free, any students are free to use it and take out books. Um, but it's also this, this reading programme that's hitting Newstead with a vengeance in September. So um, the books are in the office next door and I think there's quite maybe several hundred of them in there. And there isn't now a sort of cultural literacy reading program that's going to be taking place at Newstead during afternoon registration. Um, and sixth form will not be left out. So they will be reading um, cultural classics uh, with, with their form during the afternoon programme. So regardless of the subjects they're taking, they will be literate, well-read and cultured. Um, that brings me to the end of the frequently asked questions. It brings me to eight o'clock as well. Um, I, this is a, a question to the, the staff who are manning the, the dialogue boxes. Is there anything you would like me to talk about any further or have we come to an end at eight o'clock? Um, Go ahead. 
Sorry, I, I didn't get that, Miss Sword. Oh, sorry, you... um, I'll keep an eye on the, the chat and let you know if there are any questions. There, are, there aren't any questions at the moment. OK. I think that means you must have covered everything, Mr Bournat. I can't believe I've talked about sick form for an hour. I really do need to get out more. Um, but yes. I've been busily trying to think of other questions to ask you, but uh, you seem to have covered everything. Mm. Well, I, I am very passionate about sick form. Um, I do really enjoy working here. I enjoy working with the students. Um, and so, I mean, the last thing to say is if you are a parent who's, who's, who's logging in, um, whose who's son or daughter or child has been at our transition week, thank you. They, they really have worked very hard. It's been lovely to work with them, to see them working in lessons, to answer their questions. They have, you know, from playing rounders on the field today through to observing a maths lesson, they have they've put in 100%. They've had a difficult year. Um, they've uh, got through it well. I mean, their predicted grades are fantastic. If you're if you're logging into this, then they must be doing very well. Um, so thank you for for sending them along. Um, we certainly enjoyed having them. We've got a few more days left. We will continue to be in touch with the students over the coming weeks and over the summer as well. Um, not not just with regards to resources for academic work, but also just to sort of keep in touch with them, touch base um, in, in over the coming weeks and months. Um, so I look forward, I suppose, to seeing parents and students on enrolment day in August. And, and I wish you all good luck with your exam results that you're going to be receiving then. And I hope to meet you very soon. <laughs>